Hi everybody, my name is Tom Jaws. Welcome to Blend That Film. Welcome to the first episode of Blend That Film. In this show, what I'm going to be looking at doing is teaching you how to use the free open source software Blender to produce some professional looking special effects for your DIY films. Now, Blender is primarily a 3D package. It's uh, something more akin to the likes of 3ds Max, Maya, XSI, Lightwave, uh, those sort of packages. But um, I've come to appreciate Blender for its low budget filmmaking ability potential. It has uh, a great little video sequence editor which you can cut together a scene or an entire movie should you want. And also has a very, very competitive and very uh, professional looking uh, no base compositing system. Now, all of these things mean that you can produce the same kind of effects that you would probably see commonplacely produced inside the likes of Adobe After Effects, Fusion, uh, Nuke, etc. And so, without further ado, let's get into our first tutorial. Okay, so for the first tutorial I chose cloning, and I chose cloning for a reason. Uh, one, it's a very simple effect to achieve, and two, it uses a very key component inside of the compositing system, um, a very key technique, and that technique is known as masking. And that technique is going to be using a small tool that's been developed in Blender 2.5 called the Roto Begier tool. So uh, let's take a look at how we're going to be doing this effect. Take a look at this shot. As you can see, I'll be using a lockdown camera. This makes the effect a lot easier to achieve. The first thing you need to do is you need to shoot your footage. So with your camera locked down to a tripod, have your actor play out all the parts of the clones. In my case, I had a definite idea of where I wanted the separation to be, and so I had Nicola hit certain marks so as to avoid too much overlapping, and this would make it a lot easier in post-production. With any effect shot, the first thing you need to do is you need to set your render settings to match your source footage. In my case, I mainly work at 720p. You can even create your own preset for your preferred settings. Now, as I said earlier, one of the most common used techniques in compositing is masking, and in Blender, that requires that we use the Roto Begier tool. This is not turned on by default, so we need to go into the user preferences, open up the add-ons tab, and turn on Roto Begier tool. You can do this simply by searching or typing in the search bar Roto, and it'll pretty much come up straight away. With all this done, we can now save our default setup, and we'll never have to go through any of this again. Now, the way I like to work is by using separate scenes. Blender can have multiple scenes per blend file. It's a lot like having a layer system, but within these scenes you then have your own layer system, so it gives you great scope and also helps to stop Blender from slowing down too much. So with our new default scheme set up, we can delete everything in the scene and rename the current scene compositing, and then we can switch over to the node editing window, and here we can turn on use nodes. Now add a new scene. Select the copy settings, and then name it masking, and switch back to the 3D view. Add a camera to this scene by hitting Shift A. Select your camera and then change the type of camera to orthographic. Hit 5 and then 7 on the numpad and this will line up the view with the top orthographic view. Now hit Ctrl Alt 0 and this will align the camera to that view. The reason why I align my camera to the top view is because when you add Bezier curves that you use in the Roto Bezier tool, you don't need to keep rotating them to match your view. So bring up the view properties, and here we'll add not one, but two background images, creating an overlaid view of our two shots for reference. I was really impressed when I found out Blender could do this. Okay, now it's time to start doing some actual work towards the effect. Hit Shift A and add a Bezier curve. Change it to 2D and switch over to editing mode. Over in the Roto Bezier settings, turn off handles, and this will help to keep the viewport really clean for the moment. Select both the vertices in the line and hit V to bring up the handle types and select vector. We now have a straight line. OK, so what you need to do now is you need to shuttle through, forward through time to the point in your footage at which your actor crosses over him herself and where there's the most extreme part of overlap. And this will help you determine just how much detail you're going to need to mask around. In my case, I had to draw all the way around the hand and the pen. OK, so we're going to go back to frame one now. And with that knowledge, we're going to start to use the vertices and we're going to extrude them out to start drawing out our initial shape. Once you get all the way around, go around the edge of the frame and then use the F key to finish the gap between the last two vertices. 
Click the white map button. This will add a white map material to the shape, which is perfect for creating a mask with. And then you can use the display tools to toggle between having a shape filled or not. So with our initial shape set up, we're going to return to frame 1 and we're going to now embark upon the task of moving forward through time and using the Roto Begio's tools own keyframing options to animate the shape to match the actor's movements. Once you've been through the whole sequence, you can then hit render. So jump back over to the node editing window. As you can see, we have one render layers node and also one composite node already set up. Add two image input nodes by hitting Shift A and into these load up your two bits of footage. Be sure to set the frames value to the length of your clips. Now add an alpha and over node and into its inputs pipe your two pieces of footage. Then into the fact value input pipe your render layers node and voila, your effect is working. Now to better sell the effect and also to avoid any harsh lines, we're going to add a blur node between the render layer node and the alpha over node give it a nice feathering effect. And that's it, all you have to do now is pipe out that result to a composite node and hit Ctrl F12 to render your scene. Actually that's not quite it, because the eagle-eyed of you out there may have noticed that there was one extra node within my node chain which I failed to mention. And this is because uh, the footage that I used for the effect was never intended to be the final result, it was actually just a test that I shot quickly one night. And when I shot it, I made two mistakes. First one was that I didn't use any lighting of any description. I just used the environment lighting in the room and there was some window light, which meant as the sun started going down a little, there was a definite change in the lighting. And the second mistake was that I didn't set the white balance on my camera. I just used auto white balance. And for anybody out there who knows anything about filmmaking, uh, auto white balance is the devil. Uh, so what I've actually added in between uh, the one layer of footage and uh, the alpha over node is a very simple RGB curves which I've just used to adjust the brightness between the two shots so that you get a more seamless result. So um, that's it really, thanks very much for watching. Um, this has been the first time I've ever done anything along these lines so I hope you've enjoyed it and any of the professional uh, or unprofessional moments I've had um, you might forgive and hopefully I'll get better in the future. Um, just want to say also that everything in this video has been produced entirely inside of Blender uh, from the opening title sequence to the lower third that you see down the bottom of the screen to the green screen behind me and uh, then all the editing as well for the actual episode has all been done inside the video sequence editor. Uh, the only thing that wasn't done inside of Blender was the um, Camtasia um, software that I used to record the screen capture. Um, so that's really it. Thanks very much for watching and uh, next time out Hopefully we'll look into something a little more cooler, uh, so keep an eye out. Thanks then, bye.